Welcome back to Tetracan Super Monoblock, channel about repairing and using multi-track tape recorders. Continuing this vlog on the Port Studio 464, I'm going to open this up. So first thing to do is, inside the cassette cavity, there are two screws that need to be removed. Make sure you don't lose these screws because they're the only ones of this size on the whole machine. Keep those safe in a components box. You can use an ice cream tub, whatever, but don't lose them. Turn the machine over. So by the looks of it, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws to remove. Okay, so around the edges are all of this shorter black type and these two up here are of this longer, narrower type. I say narrower, I mean the, the ferrule and the screw is narrower. I think these ones must be screwing into metal on the inside whereas these ones are screwing into plastic because they've got the wider ferrule. And then this longer one was in that central hole there. Okay. So that opens up and then much like uh, we had in the 44 Mark III video, got a bunch of cables connecting here and a bunch of cables connecting down there. So I'll just um, unplug them. We're going to be able to identify what goes where by the number of pins or the colour of the plugs. I tend to pull these out by hand but do use pliers on the sides of the plugs if you're worried about breaking anything. If you've seen the video that I did before about the 44 Mark III, you can see the location and number of um, cables that we've got to attach are pretty similar. Only major difference from memory on opening it, this up is that the uh, power filtering is on a separate board. It's attached with these vocal re regulators to a metal plate underneath for that'll be a heat sink. And of course, we've uh, we've got a transformer inside here. So I probably should have said before we open this up. Basically, I mean, once you get to this board, there's the voltages and currents involved are pretty non-lethal. But this is unplugged. If I were to touch across the live and neutral wire here, my finger, or with a you know a screwdriver that I mean that's got a rubber handle. Let's say I was holding it like that, so I was touching the ferrule and went like that. You know that's me plugged into the main, so potentially you know I'm injured or dead. So be much more cautious about opening up this unit than I was when I opened up the 424 Mark III. You know, there is a, a genuine shock hazard if you get into this area. Not, you can touch stuff like this and, you know, you might zap an integrated circuit, but you won't harm, harm yourself. But uh, that's a potentially lethal area. So either have it unplugged. If you've got it plugged in, probably what I do is put a bit of um, gaffer tape or something over the top there. You can get um, rubber insulated gloves. If you're going to touch it at all, then do try and touch it with your right hand rather than your left, even if you're left-handed, because uh, then the current's less likely to pass through your heart and stop it and kill you. So a little safety message there. So that's just got it open. In the next video, I'll remove the transport and uh, change the belt on it.